Hi, and welcome to another guided video tour. Uh, as always, if you prefer to watch this video without any narration, there's also a version of this video on my channel that only has the ambient sounds. So if you per prefer that one, uh, you will find the link in the video description. So right now we are in front of the Enoshima station on the Enoden line. The Enoden is uh, a very old uh, local train line run by a private company. Uh, it's uh, a bit of a hybrid between a train and a streetcar. Uh, and it runs uh, along the Pacific Ocean coast uh, connecting the city of Fujisawa to uh, Kamakura, which is uh, another popular tourist destination. And now we are walking along uh, Subana Street, which is um, the street that leads from the station to the uh, to the island of Enoshima, where we will be going today. And this street has lots of small restaurants and uh, also several shops selling beach equipment, swimwear, sunglasses, um, snorkels, that kind of stuff. Uh, because this area is uh, also very popular thanks to its uh, beaches. I think the beaches here are probably the closest one to central Tokyo, where you're actually allowed to swim in the ocean. There are some beaches in Tokyo as well, but you're not really allowed to, to take a proper swim there because the water is too filthy. But um, here, swimming is okay. And on this street you will also find several rest restaurants uh, specializing in shirasudon, which is the local delicacy around here. Shirasu is a small, um, tiny, tiny fish. So this dish, shirasudon, is basically a bowl of rice topped with uh, this shirasu. And um, many people, especially Westerners, um, think that these shirasu look pretty gross. Uh, they're very, very tiny, small fish, like I said, and you can see their eyes and their faces. Um, so yeah, it is a little bit of a acquired taste, even though the, the flavor of the fish itself is actually very uh, usui or very weak, neutral. Uh, I'm personally a big fan, so um, and I think it's worth trying out if you're here. But uh, moving on, we are uh, on our way to the bridge that connects the island of Enoshima to the Japanese mainland. And uh, next to the bridge, there's uh, also another train station. Uh, and that's the Katase Enoshima station on the Odakyu line. Uh, if you are coming from uh, Shinjuku in central Tokyo, Taking the Odaku line is uh, the cheapest and most convenient way to get to Enoshima. It's probably not the, the fastest, but um, the time difference compared to if you are taking JR lines, it's not that big. And with Odaku, you can also buy a pretty good uh, discount ticket that gives you the entire ride from Shinjuku in central Tokyo to uh, Katase Enoshima station. Uh, and from there you can go and take the Eno Den line, the one we just uh, saw in the beginning of this video. And you're allowed to ride the Eno Den as much as you like during the entire day. And then of course the train ride back to Tokyo is also included in this ticket. So if you buy this discount ticket, you will save a few hundred yen compared to if you were to buy this ticket separately. So it's definitely a good deal. The ride from uh, Shinjuku to uh, Enoshima takes a little over one hour, depending on what kind of train you catch. Um, and then to get from Enoshima to Kamakura, it's uh, about 30 minutes ride on the Enoden. So you can actually visit both these places during a day trip, which is what a lot of people do.
so we are now approaching the end of the shopping street uh, and uh, from here there's a small tunnel and uh, then we will be on the bridge that uh, leads us to Enoshima which you can see in the distance uh, of the frame right now uh, and here to the right is the Katase Enoshima station on the Odaku line that I mentioned before the one that will take you all the way to Shinjuku in uh, central Tokyo without transfer. So now we are on Enoshima Bashi, which is the bridge that uh, connects uh, Enoshima to the mainland of Japan. From this bridge you can get a very nice view of Mount Fuji uh, on clear days, but unfortunately the day that I was filming this video the weather was quite hazy, so you can't really see the mountain today. That's Enoshima in the distance, and the tower on top of the island is the Enoshima Sky Tower or Enoshima Sky Candle uh, uh, observation deck. It's located in a small botanical garden on the island. Uh, unfortunately, you have to pay a separate entrance ticket to the uh, botanical garden, but uh, it might be worth it if you want to experience the, the absolutely best view of the surrounding landscape from there. Here on the right you see a small boat that's actually a tiny ferry that connects uh, this bridge to the rear part of the Enoshima island. So if you don't want to walk all the way there and back you can take the, the ferry uh, one way. It costs a few hundred yen but uh, might be worth it if you're on a tight schedule or if you just don't like walking. But uh, personally I think the island is so charming and so small in itself. So. I usually don't mind walking both ways. It takes about 20 minutes to half an hour one way if you are just walking straight. But uh, of course there's so much to see and do on the island so it tends to take several times uh, as long for that reason.
You will most likely come across uh, many fishermen around here. It's quite a popular spot for fishing. So if this was a very clear day, you would see Mount Fuji somewhere on the horizon from here. But um, unfortunately, we were not blessed with that kind of weather today. Now we are finally on uh, Enochima uh, and the first uh, street that we will walk through is this uh, kind of main street uh, which is full of small shops selling food and snacks uh, and lots of souvenir shops as well. Uh, there's also a handful of restaurants around here but um, I would recommend that you wait with uh, any food until you get uh, further in uh, inside the island because the, the restaurants here are quite expensive and uh, they also don't have any view but if you go to the restaurants further away from here uh, you will have many places where you can have a gorgeous view of the of the ocean and the horizon in the distance uh, instead uh, and also the prices will be much lower
now we are approaching the entrance to the first of many shrines that we will come across on this island. Um, when you look at the shrines on Google Maps, they're actually all called the Enoshima Shrine, but in Japanese they have uh, different names, so they are actually separate shrines. Uh, but this one is uh, also in Japanese called Enoshima Jinja or Enoshima Shrine. Um, you can't walk stri straight up uh, to get there, but I will take this little detour to uh, uh, show you another little shrine that is located here. And also here on the right you have the first entrance to the network of paid escalators on Enoshima. So um, if you really don't like walking in stairs or if you have some disabilities, um, then uh, those escalators will let you ride uh, up instead. But you have to pay a few hundred yen uh, for each ride. Or you can purchase a day ticket, which I think allows you to ride them as much as you like. Which is very great for people who love escalators, by the way. Just saying. So yeah, here's the entrance to the other little shrine I mentioned. You can see it up here uh, on the top of the hill. Uh, I won't be visiting it here in this video, but uh, it's uh, it's quite nice uh, and you get a little bit of a view from up there and it's also always very, very quiet up there. So if you prefer these like quiet, almost abandoned uh, serene shrines, then uh, this one is definitely worth a visit. Here on the left side, you actually see one of uh, the residential houses on Enoshima. So there are uh, a few uh, households living on this island. Uh, most of the residential houses are located on the eastern side of the island, uh, where there's also a small marina. Uh, but there's also several residential houses uh, along the, the main path that uh, most tourists uh, walk through. So I think some of these shops on the islands are actually run by the the people living here but i'm not entirely sure about that but at least they're in in the same building in the same house so it seems like it could be run by the the family actually living there i'm not sure if this couple here is a, a local um, local couple could be because they're taking this little path that leads to the residential area so uh, they didn't look like tourists personally i'm not sure if i would like to live on anashima i mean i'm i really en enjoy traveling here and visiting it from time to time but i think having to go here every day and especially climbing all those stairs and coming home late at night after a long day at work would probably be quite tiring uh, but then again, I've always dreamed about living in a house with an ocean view, so maybe. Anyway, here's the, the first uh, shrine again, the Enoshima Jinja. Uh, and I have to apologize in advance, I'm not like uh, an expert on shrines or anything, so I can't really tell you the history behind this place or what if, if it has anything special that it's uh, well known for. Uh, the only thing I know is that it has one of these um, places where you can um, wash your money in a small pond. Uh, we will get there quite soon. Um, and uh, yeah, basically you take a few coins and you put them in a small basket and wash them in the pond. And that's supposed to give you a good luck. And also these pink uh, uh, tablets attached here, they're, they're, um, you can buy those and you, you're supposed to write your wish on them and then put them here and uh, I guess if you've been kind to the gods they will be kind to you in return. Here's a nice little lookout point where you can see the shopping street that we passed a little while ago uh, and uh, you can also see the bridge to the island if the exposure of my camera will adjust correctly. Ah, oh, there we go. So yeah, that's the that's basically the, the path we already walked so far in the video.
and the number of people on the island today is extremely low. I've been here dozens of times and I've never ever seen it this quiet. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's obviously because the number of uh, international tourists in Japan right now is down by 99.9%. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, small businesses are really, really suffering right now uh, due to this situation. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the smaller shops on this island might go bankrupt due to, to this crisis. So here's the small pond that I mentioned before where you can wash your money in order to get a good fortune and uh, you can also throw a coin into the box in front of this dragon and um, yeah I don't know what will happen if you hit it but I guess you will receive the blessing from the gods thanks to your amazing aiming skills or something. Now we are approaching uh, one of many lookout points on this island uh, and we're already quite high up so the view from up here is actually really really nice uh, as you will see right now. Uh, so the piece of land in the distance on the right side here is the Miura Peninsula which is the most uh, southern point of the Kanagawa prefecture. Uh, that peninsula has lots of uh, really nice resorts towns as well which I will probably cover in future videos and here below you can also see the small harbor and marina uh, <laughs> if you're really ambitious you can actually walk along the coast uh, all the way to Kamakura it's uh, not too far like maybe five kilometers or something like that so it can be done in, in an hour and it's a really nice walk along the beach. And there's lots of these hawks uh, in this area. So if you are eating something, you need to be really, really careful because they might come and attack you and try to snatch it uh, out of your hand, which can be a pretty painful experience. It happened to me once when I had a hot dog around here. So. Yeah, it's not something I would recommend. Now we are approaching the second shrine. Uh, and uh, Again, I'm not a shrine expert, so I have to look these up on Google Maps. But uh, this one is also called uh, Enoshima Shrine in, in uh, English, but it has a different name in Japanese. Uh, so I guess that 
they are separate entities. It's not really connected to the, the to the first shrine. And that's what you see right now is the escalator exit. More places to hang your wishes. And here, straight ahead, you will have one of the first uh, of those uh, small locally run restaurants that I mentioned earlier. So uh, personally, I'm, I would much rather go to a place like this where you can have a really nice view and where it feels a little bit more that you're actually supporting the locals on the island. Um, I won't vouch for this specific place as I haven't been there, but um, at least it always strikes me that the view from there must be extremely nice. So here the houses on the left side, they used to have small shops, but it looks like um, they are closed right now. I hope it's just temporary, but uh, it actually looks more like um, they might have been um, closed for good, uh, probably because of the, of the health crisis. This used to be a small souvenir shop uh, selling some handmade uh, figures. Now we are approaching the entrance to the botanical garden and uh, the Enoshima sea candle that I mentioned before. There's a small vending machine next to the gates where you buy the ticket, uh, but uh, in this video I won't be going there because uh, basically I prefer places where you can enjoy things uh, for free rather to uh, support these kind of rather unnecessary commercial facilities that um, are just there to make money of tourists. I mean, the, the views from the island, is they're amazing anyway, so you don't really need to climb up that tower. But of course, if you do want the 360 panorama of the island, then yeah, maybe it's worth a couple of hundred yen it costs to, to enter. Now we are approaching uh, another place where you can get a really, really nice view. Uh, from this lookout point, um, you are looking south rather than west, uh, which is uh, what we did at the previous one. So from here, you just see the open sea. And you should also be able to see the island of Izooshima on clear days but um, yeah today the weather is kind of hazy so you can't really see that island from here but like I said the views from up here are truly amazing Here's a small terrace with uh, a small kiosk that sells some snacks and drinks uh, and uh, I think there's also an Italian restaurant uh, behind me. It's a quite nice place to stop by for a beer 
uh, especially since you can enjoy the nice view from up there. So on this little stretch there's a few more restaurants uh, this one as well I think has a pretty nice view and as always in Japan they have a nice display window in the outside where you can see their most of the menu items and uh, how much everything costs so even if you don't speak any Japanese it's quite easy to order just bring the staff out there and point at what you want this building I'm not sure what it is but it looks like it could be some sort of religious um, religious uh, sect or cult or something like that here's another little shop selling souvenirs and beach goods also postcards and if you would like a postcard by the way uh, make sure to check out my uh, patreon page where you can sign up for the postcard club so if you join that I will send you a postcard from Japan every month um, from various locations uh, usually from places where I go when uh, I film these videos so uh, that's uh, a great way if you feel that you want to support my work uh, would be highly appreciated so the link to my patreon page is in the video description and also on my profile page here on YouTube now we are passing an old uh, minshuku which is this kind of uh, local uh, inn or lodging facility it looks very close to oh what happened to this bike wow um, i'm not sure if this place is still in operation it used to be until quite recently but now it looks really closed uh, it says that uh, two people a room for two people then the price is seven thousand yen per person so usually in Japanese uh, ryokans, the price is always quoted per person rather than per room, which is a bit odd to Western uh, uh, travelers sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's just how things work here in Japan. But the annoying thing is that some places quote the prices per room. So you need to look extra carefully. And this building is always uh, has always fascinated me. It's obviously very abandoned and... Uh, it looks like it could fall into the sea in any <laughs> any time uh, the next earthquake hits but um, it must have been really nice when um, when it was in better shape I mean the view from from up there must have been amazing and uh, yeah yeah I would be interested in living in a place like this if it was properly renovated and taken care of, of course. But, you know, with that kind of view, then maybe it would even be worth the inconvenience of, of living so far from the train station.
The restaurants here are also very nice. Uh, I've been to a few of them and uh, the food it is uh, excellent and uh, they all have panorama windows uh, where you can see the uh, the entire coastline and also Mount Fuji on clear days. So um, the restaurants are around here is actually where I usually stop for a bite myself when I come to Enoshima. Further down this street there's also some relatively new cafes and um, uh, restaurants that um, look really nice like this place for example which has a big uh, wooden veranda where you can sit outside and have a snack or some ice cream haven't been to it myself but i've been to the place that we are approaching now uh, a little bit further down the street on the right side um, it's a nice little cafe or restaurant that serves um, kind of more traditional Japanese food. Um, this one is just a cafe that has uh, well, some bread and uh, coffee and uh, I think ice cream. Uh, but this this building here on the right is, uh, serves quite high quality traditional Japanese food. It's a little bit pricier than some of the other shops here but it also feels that the quality is uh, a bit better and i really like how they decorated and renovated this place so um, this one comes uh, highly recommended Now we are approaching yet another shrine. This one is probably one of my favorites on the island. Uh, I like that it's kind of old and worn down, but still, uh, well, you know, this Tori gate, for example, is very old, but uh, looks very beautiful with this um, kind of being taken over by the nature. Um, there's also a lot of uh, cats around here usually and this place is where you where you are supposed to wash your hands which is something you're supposed to do before entering a Japanese shrine but uh, for now those uh, those kind of um, facilities where you are touching the water um, they are uh, not in use right now due to the situation that the world is uh, currently in This dragon statue is pretty cool. Um, I am again not sure what it means uh, and what will why people often go there and pray but uh, I know that it's kind of a somewhat uh, iconic place for Enoshima. Mm -hmm. 
and here on the left uh, you will find a small uh, tea house where you can have a cup of matcha tea and some traditional Japanese sweets. It's also a very nice place to make a stop uh, before you uh, walk down the stairs that leads to the edge of the island and the cliffs uh, down below. And also this restaurant here on the left side is quite nice. Um, they probably wouldn't win any awards for their food, but it's uh, the, sh the staff is very charming and uh, they have this uh, huge balcony where you can sit and it's uh, just, uh, you know, you're just surrounded with the, with the sea far down below and the, and the clouds above. It's, it's a really nice place to, to stop by. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I usually stop there for a beer, not for a meal. Same with this place down here. Great views, but uh, average food. This place has uh, the kanji for Mount Fuji in the name, so it um, probably means that you can see the mountain from uh, their terrace on clear days. So now we are actually taking the last set of stairs. Um, once we are done with these, we will be at sea level again, but on the back seat of the island where you will find lots of uh, interesting rocky landscapes. And uh, uh, it's also the place where you can take the boat back to the bridge. So basically now we covered most of the, of the parts of the island even though there are a few more areas that uh, are worth exploring if you come here but I just can't cover everything in my videos so uh, and I also want to leave a little bit for you to explore if you ever come here um, and at the end of this path um, there's the entrance to some caves called the I think they are called the Iwaya caves uh, I never really bothered paying the entrance to uh, check them out because from what I heard they're not that interesting but uh, yeah if you I don't know if you are really into caves maybe maybe it's for you so yeah here's the the rock landscape that I mentioned earlier. It's also a lot of people fishing around here. And uh, also very popular for photography. A lot of people pose for photos as you might see in, in this movie. So here's the terrace uh, belonging to that restaurant I mentioned earlier where you can see the view of Mount Fuji and just these cliffs far down below as well as the coastline. So the coastline that you see from here is um, basically the western part of Sagami Bay uh, and that's probably the city of Chigasaki that you can spot in the distance and um, further down here you can also see the Izu Peninsula on clear days uh, as well as uh, Mount Fuji as I mentioned so many times before. So we are now approaching the end of this walkway and uh, the caves that I just mentioned before. Uh, 
and uh, this is where I will wrap up this video so um, yeah I guess the only thing that's left for me to do right now is thank you so much uh, if you watched all this if you did please let me know in the comments below uh, let me know what you liked about this video and what you didn't like and uh, I plan to do more virtual tours like this uh, so if you have any requests of areas that you would like to see or if you just have any requests in terms of uh, my presentation style then uh, please let me know any sort of feedback will be highly appreciated because um, that's the only way I can get better at making these videos so yeah Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.